Hi. Hi. Um, this is a quick guide to show you how to use Save Boys 3.0. Uh, thanks for installing Save 3.0. The first thing that you want to do is uh, to open the Save and then change your your default password. Normally, the default password is one two three four. Um, so this is a tutorial to guide you to accomplish that so the first thing you have to do is you have to launch the save box 3.0 and you can do that from your desktop once it's launched then you can go straight to settings which is point two you go straight to settings yeah. to change the code move to settings which is just found below there, then you can then hit the change code. There we go. So once you click on change code, it asks you for an old code and then a new code. By default, you will you will see one two three four pre-entered within the old save, and then you can just enter the old save code. If you are new to save, then it's one two three four. But if you are old. Um, then it could be anything otherwise apart from one two three four or anything that you previously used so in this case I might enter one two three four at the old zip code and then the new code will be anything that I want to use I prefer to use POCO as the code okay like the testing goes so um, I will prefer to use one two three four as the old code, which is uh, because I'm new to the system. And then the new code will be I'll use POCO, P O K O O. That will be best. Then you change the code. Then request process successfully, and then you can hit OK. Then you go back. Yeah, and then you can proceed with um, uh, opening your save. Bye. And you can log in your save or open your save and then you can copy content and then manipulate content around as usual and then as for save code you enter the new code that you recently created in this case I might enter poor code then you hit the unlock and once it authenticates it, then you are through, and that we go. Okay. So in your save box, you can see the list of files that you have added to it, or you can add new content to the save box using the copy and paste function of Windows. Um, you can also use drag and drop effect, but only limited to Windows XP and 32 bit operating systems. In this case, we are going to use the copy and paste functionality to copy files. And then you can also delete them and manage things. You can create folders, and then the icon that is um, um, the menu that is uh, right uh, close to the sync box is a root menu. So once you click on it, you get back to the root of the folder or the save. So here is how to um, add contents to your save box. A tutorial to do that. copy and paste method so you can just go look for an item it could be your password your exams routine your your secret letter or anything you can just copy it or cut it which would be best way to to, to, to express it and then you paste it in the pay in the in the save box and you work it with a password So for the example, I'm going to copy this database, this database, I'm going to copy this database, or I could cut it, but I want to keep copy of it, so I could cut it, and I paste it in the save box, then it shows in there, so once the content shows in, this content will never be accessible by anyone, except they have the password to the save. Okay. 
So once the item has been added, you can lock the save. That's all what it says. Yeah, the save box. Number two, um, synchronizing box. Now, what this basically do is you have a folder on your desktop, which you can copy things inside it. So once you're ready, then you just open the application, and then you just hit the sync box button. It will automatically synchronize every content in the save pending box to your save box itself. Um, this feature normally pins itself to the send to uh, the send to uh, control button. Um, for this version of release, it is not available, but you can still copy and paste content to the to the sync uh, the pending box on your desktop, and then. When you're ready, you just hit the sync box and everything just copied back into your save, which is another efficient way of copying content. So in this case, you go to desktop, then you go locate uh, the pending box folder, which is, is um, save box pending, I think. But here, let me look for it. I see them. Okay. Send to, yeah. Yeah, the send to features have not just highlighted here, so we will skip that for now. And then try the normal copy and paste method for the synchronizing box. So the user will copy it and then um, I'll go to the sync box, which is um, save pending. You should see a folder called save pending box here. Then you can paste the content inside here and keep it temporarily. So keep the corner temporarily. If you are ready, then you just synchronize everything back to the save. So an item. Continue. Okay. So that's save pending box. All right. Okay. So all you have to do is once you just select the sync box, everything gets copied into this um, into the receive box itself another simple method to use to copy files to the save directory and then lock it up that save box can always be found on your desktop can use copy and paste functions to copy things to the save box or the send to which will be really available in the release the next release but currently available for Windows XP users though there is just a few restrictions for um, the, the, the later operating systems on sync is so once you have things in your in your pending box, you can just click on sync box. You copy all of the items back to the save box again. So the sync syncs everything and files copy to save that. Uh, so voila, then you see your item added to the save box, and that's it. Once um, you you click it, which is the sync box. All of the files and folders within the pending directory will then be automatically added to the save box itself. Okay, number three, using um, uh, using the. Uh, using the explorer function of save box to copy content in this case um, save merely mounts it it mounts the whole save box as a drive this allows you to easily manipulate the content so it assign a drive letter to the save box and name it drive s which can easily be explored and then content can be added in once content is added in without restrictions then you can lock the drive s or no you can lock the save box which in turn locks the drive s so either way it won't be functional 
or let's open from the app so once completed um, the content automatically added to the save box and then go through to go so you can just lock your your, your safe and then that's all it's all it's locked no one can access it again unless you enter a password so on the next opening you will ask you for a password and if you enter a wrong password you get an alarm alarm that alerts you that the password is wrong it blows up and then you can catch the, the thief or whoever try to access your content <laughs> So um, I'm going to load it up again. I'm going to open it up and enter the new details that I used to unlock the save. So I have access to it there. I can then copy contents or lock it up, and then I can um, open it again. And then intentionally use the wrong password to test the alarm system in save. Yeah, wrong code. It's simple and efficient software, and I hope you like it. Give feedback and then comments, and project ideas, and wish lists, and other things. I do really appreciate your effort of using Save, and thank you very much. And let your computer science in. Yeah. No.